The following broadcast is released under a Creative Commons license. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. I believe He lived and died, and that He rose again. I believe and trust in Him. Ascended into hell, Christ our living head will one day come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe and trust in Him. I will trust in my Redeemer, sing of His love. The last forever Know His hope And sure salvation I will trust in Him Though the world Falls around me I rest And know That He has found me Christ the rock Is my foundation Welcome all to Pastor Yeshua. You've been listening to Creed by Richard Jensen from his album, Order of Service. By way of introduction, Pastor is an acrostic which stands for Preaching All Salvation Through One Redeemer. Our Redeemer, Yeshua, Jesus, is the Hebrew name for the Lord. It means Yahweh, the Lord, is salvation. Translated from Hebrew into the Greek language, the name Yeshua becomes Jesus. The English transliteration for Jesus is Jesus. This program deals with apologetics, questions on and about God, the Bible, and the Christian faith. I take questions and seek by scripture to give answers and encouragement for everyone, including the tough-minded living in today's skeptical society. And now, let's join Pastor Yeshua. Welcome to Pastor Yeshua. In this episode series, we are asking and discussing questions regarding a media campaign called He Gets Us. As with all issues which present themselves as subjects which present Jesus, the Bible, God, or Christianity, we defer to examining such claims against the Bible using proper exegetical and hermeneutical principles as well as Berean discernment. Let's jump in and continue where we left off. Now, our next subject is actually an article entitled, Jesus Was Fed Up With Politics Too. In this article, He Gets Us attempts to compare the landscape of politics during Jesus' day and today. So, in order to help He Gets Us, Let's set the mood. Listen and let he gets us make their own case. Quote, So where was Jesus in all of this? Did he align with the religious elites? With the wealthy and powerful? Or did he start an uprising to overthrow them? None of the above. He went from town to town, offering hope, new life, and modeling a different way to live and to change the world. Instead of pursuing power, money, or religious authority, he shared a loving and sacrificial, generous way of living. He chose not to go along with the schemes others used to impact the world. Instead, he championed a better way, unquote. 
Notice the entire premise here is that Jesus did what he did to, quote, change the world, unquote. But the truth is that according to Jesus, quote, my kingdom is not of this world, uh, John eighteen thirty six. Further, Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 18 and 19, quote, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you, unquote. So, Jesus is not trying to change the entire world. Jesus came to reconcile and redeem his elect out of the world to himself. This is why Jesus' followers are called the church, because the word church in Greek literally means, quote, out-called ones, unquote. The better way that Jesus promotes can only happen by virtue of being born again via a faith relationship with him. Simply following Jesus' example apart from a relationship with him may marginally help outward appearances, but will never affect our relationship with God, which is the issue Jesus cares about. In conclusion, Jesus' ministry was never intended to be a fix to the entire world or an answer to politics. Jesus' ministry on earth dealt with the redemption of God's elect and reconciliation from sin. In order to help, he gets us. Let me share the biblical Jesus and the specifics of what he is going to do to, quote, change the world, unquote. Quote, and I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he might smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of, the, of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sat upon them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them and had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh." Unquote. 
The next article is entitled, Can I Judge Without Being Judgmental? In this article, he gets us, says that, quote, this scripture kind of trips us up, unquote. Well, since it's not clear whether they are making an admission that they are, quote, tripped up, unquote, or if they mean that to say that us laymen are, quote, tripped up, while the elites at He Gets Us have figured it out, or they mean everyone is, quote, unquote, tripped up. In any case, He Gets Us goes on to clarify the saying, saying, quote, he, i.e. Jesus, was calling out the hypocrisy of pointing out the faults in others when we have our own faults we should be working on. The article goes on to create a false equivocation between, quote, honest evaluation, which is necessary for a safe and functioning society, unquote, the type of judging which, quote, originates from our ego, unquote, or the type of judgment which, quote, justifies our own bad behavior by labeling someone else's behavior as worse, unquote. Okay, well, let's get straight to the point here. God is sovereign and in authority over all things. God is the ultimate authority for meaning, morals, truth, beauty, reality, and significance throughout the universe, throughout time. God's Word, the Bible, in context, articulates God's authority, His rules, His law, His love, His justice, mercy, righteousness, holiness, grace, good, bad, etc., God commands his people to embrace, to rejoice, believe, conform to, proclaim love, and practice those things which his word reveals as good, and to support and defend others who do likewise. God also commands that his people abhor, dislike, avoid, condemn, detest, and hate those things which his word reveals as being sin and or evil and to lovingly admonish, reproach, and condemn those who are involved in them. We must always start with ourselves in the identification, admission, and repentance of sin. But we do not have to be perfect or free of sin in order to talk about or to condemn the sin of others or the world around us. In conclusion, no, Jesus does not want us to judge anyone from the bench of our ego or our own fleshly opinion. Jesus certainly could care less about giving ratings on social media, thumbs up, likes, high fives, gold stars, or participation trophy awards. But Jesus does expect us to be honest by using his revealed word when we observe others involved in willful sin and rebellion. We are commanded to be salt and light. We are commanded to be preachers and teachers of God's word. We are expected to unabashedly call out and repudiate sin and rebellion whenever and wherever it manifests itself. We are to unapologetically, vocally, and lovingly abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Ultimately, our love and concern is for the well-being and eternal condition of people's souls. Feelings, self-esteem, and political correctness are a distant secular concern. Next up, we have the article entitled, Is This a Campaign to Get Me to Go to Church? Here, He Gets Us immediately answers 
quote-unquote no to the question. Well, let me be equally candid. The true church, which the Jesus of the Bible founded, was and is two or more people gathered together under the confident, faithful belief and proclamation that Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, who was crucified, died, was buried, and rose again the third day. Jesus ascended to the Father, from whence he will soon return to judge the living and the dead. Those that have placed their faith in his finished work on the cross and confess him as Lord will spend eternity with him. In comparison, how does he gets us describe Jesus? Well, mix about 10 or 15,000 gallons of water to water it down and here's what you have. <laughs> Let's listen to the article. Quote, he gets us, simply invites all to consider. Stop! Okay, Jesus never sent his disciples out to have people consider. Jesus sent his disciples to boldly and unabashedly preach the truth of the gospel. Further, Jesus instructed his disciples to wipe off the dust of their feet in those towns where people would not receive the gospel. There was never a suggestion to water it down, to change Jesus or his message to a more palatable story that people would be comfortable with. Anyway, he gets us simply invites all to consider the story of a man who created a radical love movement. Stop! All right, here we go again. Undefined radical love of what? Everything? Anything? Or perhaps things which God biblically approves of and calls good rather than sin? Anyway, continuing, quote, who created a radical love movement that continues to impact the world thousands of years later. There are many churches and Christian groups that can help people who are spiritually open to understand more about who Jesus was and why his words and life are relevant today, unquote. Stop! Well, if the last five episodes detailing the discernment and proper understanding of who Jesus was and is by He Gets Us is any indication of the discernment and proper understanding of the quote-unquote churches and quote-unquote Christian groups who He Gets Us believes can help people to understand more about Jesus and his words, then my suggestion is to run fast and get as far away as possible from he gets us and any recommendations they might have. So here I conclude a biblical evaluation of he gets us. And perhaps you say, haven't you been rather harsh? I mean, they are just innocently doing the best they can and trying really hard. How does it hurt to give hope to people through the life and example of Jesus? Well, let's remember, Jesus is God. Jesus is the Messiah who came to earth, who was born of a virgin, fulfilled all the law and all righteousness, both 100% as a man and 100% as God of very God. Jesus was crucified, he died, and he rose again. Jesus is coming again to judge the living and the dead and to create a new heaven and a new earth. Those whom are God's elect will come to a saving knowledge and relationship with Jesus and have his righteousness imputed. 
This is the only basis of salvation and eternal life. Those who reject or deny Jesus as Lord will remain in their sin. They will be judged, they will be found guilty, and they will spend eternity separated from God in torment in the lake of fire. The problem is that this program from He Gets Us never, ever tells anyone that Jesus is God. The closest that they come to is to say that Jesus prayed to God. Now, I am just simply sorry, but any message, any gospel, any movement which ignores or denies the above truth is not of God. Any group or movement who attempts to reinvent, reinterpret, or redefine Jesus away from all of his full and perfect attributes of love, mercy, peace, justice, righteousness, and holiness for less than his complete nature creates a false God. This is precisely what seeker-sensitive groups do. They survey the community around them to see what the community wants in a prospective quote-unquote church. What kind of quote-unquote Jesus meets with their approval? What kind of quote-unquote God will they worship? What offends people? What makes people feel good? Then... They blend all the ingredients together in order to attract as many people into a building labeled as a quote-unquote church as is possible. Rather than preaching and teaching the God of the Bible verse by verse from cover to cover in an attempt to have God's Word transform sinners, in the end, God and Jesus are transformed to look like a fallen world. This is the problem with He Gets Us. What is their view of Jesus? They appear to be consumed with doing everything possible to redefine and market Jesus to look like a fallen human with only the attributes which meet approval with today's culture instead of a high view of God who came in the flesh. We have the everyday view of a mere man bent on making friends and getting along. They have substituted a holy love of God for an undefined love that loves everything and everyone devoid of holiness instead of an all-powerful, omnipotent God. We instead have Jesus who, faced with death, can only remain silent and weep in order to identify with people. Instead of the God-man, Jesus, who was incarnated in the flesh to proclaim repentance, reconciliation, and life eternal for those who would believe in him as Messiah and as the Lord, we have a guy who was only a major influencer, a secular community activist who got trolled on the internet and then got canceled instead of a holy, righteous God in the flesh. We have Jesus being born as a result of a teenager who engaged in premarital intercourse with more than one boyfriend. And I could go on, because if it were just one video that misspoke, and the rest were accurate to Scripture, I would not be wasting my time. But instead, we have every video, every article which present, at best, a skewed, fleshly, worldly image of Jesus, and in some cases present plain heresy and blasphemy. No, I'm not being rash 
I'm not being harsh. I looked everywhere, including taking the time to look at the weekly devotionals provided with the program from He Gets Us. And again, He Gets Us carefully repeats the same propagandized marketing messages about Jesus as the videos and articles that we have so far discussed. The central missing element from He Gets Us, whether you look at the videos, the articles, the devotionals, or the website, is this. Sin. That's right. In the entire message, top down, side to side, any discussion or mention of sin is carefully and purposely missing and avoided. In its place, we are told time and again that Jesus is about inclusion, acceptance, tolerance, understanding, joy, and love. There is never any discussion that the entire reason that Jesus came was to reconcile his elect from the universal condition of sin. Further, the only way to the Father, to eternal life, to heaven, and the only way to repair our separation from God, eventual judgment, and condemnation eternally, are by God's grace to repent of our sin. So what difference does it make if we are all holding hands and singing happily if we are sinners who have not been transformed by Christ's atoning work? As Jesus puts it, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? This is the offensive thing I see. Instead of a doctor who should know better giving a patient who has a life-threatening infection penicillin, you have a doctor giving the patient bubble gum and saying, enjoy yourself at the party. Meanwhile, the patient who should be attending to a life-threatening issue is tricked into feeling better about things because of the balloons, the confetti, and the other patients at the party who are having fun while they too languish in and die of an infection. This is the issue with He Gets Us. They are giving people a superficial fix temporarily in this life while sacrificing people's eternal destiny. And let's be honest, the party which they are presenting in the here and now is very attractive. In this party, everyone is welcome. No one is excluded except those who would dare to talk about sin, the infection, or what is required for eternity according to the Bible. In this party, all you have to do is love everybody and everything without any judgment. You're supposed to accept everyone and everything with positive, affirming language. Most importantly, there can never be any discussion of a holy, just, and righteous God and or sin Yes, in the He Gets Us theology, truthful biblical discussion of sin and a rebellion against God is considered hate, intolerance, prejudice, bullying, and makes people feel unsafe in the warm cocoon created and provided care of the seeker-sensitive movement, and He Gets Us. But this is the marketing point by design. People who are in sin and rebellion like their sin. We all do. We want liberty to continue doing the things that make us feel good. Most of all, we do not want anyone showing up to the party and reminding us that sin is an offense to a holy God. We don't want to hear that God has commanded that we should be holy as He is holy. 
Nobody wants to hear that God will eventually pour out his wrath against those in sin and rebellion. No one wants to be reminded that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. No, all of these things with the talk about sin and rebellion force us to be confronted, convicted, and oh no, possibly to be converted where we will no longer be able to be having fun sinning. So what do we do? We either deny God, the Bible, and the existence of sin, or, as in the case of He Gets Us, we redefine Jesus, God, and the Bible as a message of inclusion, acceptance, tolerance, and undefined universalistic love. In the end, we wind up with a get-along, go-along, participation trophy, social justice warrior, identity politics, community activist, care bearer, Barney the Purple Dinosaur, worldly Jesus, whose sole goal in life was and is to blend in and be just like us so that we don't have to be anything other than those things which are right in our own eyes. Meanwhile, whatever things, good, bad, evil, or indifferent that we choose to do, Jesus will be our greatest cheerleader, standing on the sidelines as he claps, cheers, and encourages us all to do our best. I think I'm going to be sick. But as I close, permit me to proclaim a historical and accurate portrait of Jesus from God's word. Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like on the fine brass as they were burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. My suggestion and my prayer in all seriousness is that everyone get out and stay out of He Gets Us. Because while the worldly and secular Jesus of He Gets Us may get us, He Gets Us does not even come close to getting the Jesus of the Bible and of history. Lord, we know, as you have already warned us, that in the last days there shall arise many false Christs and false prophets, so that, if it were possible, even the elect might be deceived. 
But Lord, I pray that you would pour out your spirit of discernment through this series so that by your grace, as many as possible would know and have a true and living relationship with Jesus, who is God of very God, King of kings, and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, amen. This concludes this series. Now, if you have any questions about God, the Bible, or the Christian faith, I encourage you to send me an email at pastor underscore Yeshua at yahoo.com. That's P-A-S-T-O-R underscore Y-E-S-H-U-A at yahoo.com. Thank you for listening. The world falls